Hey there guys, Dan Etterberg here. Hope you've been doing well. So this is the third video in this MTCNA playlist, which will be focusing on how to access your Microtik device. How do you actually get into it to configure it and play around and mess about with the settings and actually see what's going on? This is what this video is for. So there's many different ways that you can access your Microtik device. Hopefully I can show you how you can go about doing it and then you can just get on with the configuration steps as well. So again, I'd just like to ask if you do find any benefit to the content, please like and share it and also maybe leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think about it because it does help with the YouTube algorithm business. So let's get into the video. So you got that awesome looking Microtik box. It's got this cool art on it. It kind of looks like these Nordic ruins. It reminds me of God of War. If you're not aware, I'm a big gamer as well. I love God of War and all that stuff. But this is not about God of War. This is about how do you access your Microtik for the first time. And if you're like me, you might open up the box, you take the Microtik out, you just plug it in and you immediately just want to access it. So you plug your laptop or your computer into the first ethernet port and you're like, hey, how do I actually get onto this device now? So I'm going to also just recommend something to you. The moment you take your Microtik out of that box and you connect it, you should actually be connecting on Ethernet too, if it's a router board or a home access point or something like that. Because if you're not aware, Microtik actually ships their devices with a default configuration. And in Microtik's eyes, that first Ethernet port, Ether1, is typically designated as a WAN interface. They kind of expect that device to be interacting with the general internet or networks outside of your network. So Microtik tends to add some firewall rules and all kinds of cool funky stuff by default just to protect you. But this could also make problems for somebody like me where you're connecting onto that first port and then you can't access the device no matter what you do. So you'd first have to get on Ether2 or any of the other ports so that you can actually get onto the Microtik. So that is the first big thing I wanna point out when it comes to accessing your Microtik. The second thing is, what can you use to get onto the Microtik? Now, if you're not aware, and I will actually reference this a lot during this, <laughs> this uh, series or playlist, I do recommend going onto the Microtik documentation. It's help.microtik forward slash docs. And from the documentation, we can actually look at the different ways that we can get onto our Microtik. I think if we look at the network management, um, where is it? <laughs> I'm trying to remember exactly where Microtik has put it. Maybe it's at the management tools. So management tools, we can see there's different ways that we can access our Microtik. But I want you to think about it this way. When you're accessing your Microtik, there's four typ typical ways that you might get onto it. The first and foremost way that most people use to connect to their Microtik is using an application called Winbox. It is developed by Microtik and it's such a cool and powerful little application. Let me show you where you can get Winbox quickly. And this is again on the Microtik website itself. So www.microtik.com or just microtik.com. Go into the software tab. And from the software, we can see there's this little download button for Winbox. Now Winbox is a very lightweight application. It actually runs some sub protocol, namely Microtik network discovery protocol, which kind of lets your machine talk to any other Microtiks, even on layer two. So I'm going to open up Winbox so you can see what it looks like. It, I've actually got it open here already, but it looks so basic, but it's so powerful as well, if you think about it, because the moment Winbox runs, it's running that network discovery protocol tool, and it can pick up any Microtiks that's connected on the same network. So here I can immediately see what a MAC address is, and I can even see what the IP address is of the Microtik that I'm trying to connect to. The interesting part is when you click on, let's say the MAC address, it automatically fills in the connect to field with that MAC address details. Same if we click on the IP address, it will fill the IP address in those details. But let's just use the MAC address to connect it so you can see how cool and awesome this is, because if this is your first time to connecting to a Microtik, I'd actually recommend doing it this way as well, just so you can get that feel of the power of Winbox as well. Because even if we lost IP communications, as long as the link stays up between these two devices, they can still talk, they, you can still manage the Microtik. How crazy is that? And then later on in the series, we're gonna get into a protocol or a thing that Microtik calls ROMON that allows you to connect to even distant remote Microtiks using their MAC addresses because it builds this little nice overlay network. But Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's just see how we can access the marketing using Winbox. 
So all that I can do is fill in the MAC address. Then we've got our login credentials. So where do you find your login credentials? Well, it varies from Microtik to Microtik. All of the older Microtiks, they tend to use an admin without any password. So it's admin blank to log in. But I'd say those are the Microtiks before the year 2022. Afterwards, Microtik has actually started shipping their Microtiks with login credentials so that you either have a little thing that you can pull out of the Microtik, like a little card type of thing, which will tell you what your login credentials are. It might be admin with some long string of characters, or it might even be at a sticker at the bottom of your switch even. So just be aware of that. For the newer Microtiks, you will have to log in using specified login credentials. But for the older Microtiks, not so much needed. It is a security function, to be honest, because if you're not aware, a while ago, a lot of Microtiks got hacked in the wild in the internet, and it is because these Microtiks were left unguarded, even though it is mainly our faults as the administrators because we didn't specify login credentials after buying the device because we were being lazy. So Microtik said, hey, even if you're lazy, we're going to get you covered. We're going to make sure that there is login credentials. You just need to find it and log into your device. Now, I've already got the login credentials filled in, and the nice thing is the moment I click on connect, I can see what's happening on this Microtik. Now, I don't want you to be confused the first time you log on to a Microtik. We will cover everything in great detail what's happening, but Winbox itself is such a cool application because it allows you to see many different things with Microtik. You got this nice menu where you can navigate into the different type of things that you might want to manage. And again, this is where Microtik really excels for the home lab, for small businesses, for big businesses, for ISPs, for everybody. They don't restrict what we can do with the equipment. Our imagination is really the only restriction we have. You can build the most complex solutions you can think of using Microtik, or you can just use it as a plug and play router. It's completely up to you. But it's nice that you have all of the options available to you. And we will go over a lot of these options during the course. But I just want to show you that you can use this menu to navigate into different type of areas that you can configure. Maybe you want to see what's happening with the interfaces. And this is nice because now we see a nice little interface list. It will tell us how many interfaces there are. If there's a bridge configured, wireless interfaces, all that magical stuff. You can see it from here. And another thing that I like about Wimbox is this little safe mode toggle that you get. Because with safe mode, when you click on it, any configuration changes you make, only takes effect the moment you click on the safe mode button again. Reason being is maybe you're working on some very sensitive configuration and you might knock yourself out of the Microtik if, for whatever reason. If you get kicked off, the station gets killed prematurely without you exiting it, then the Microtik just discards any changes that was made during that safe mode session. So that is actually a really cool little thing. But this is the first way that we can use to get onto the Microtik using Winbox. The second way is you can actually connect using a CLI or terminal. Now, even inside Winbox, you can connect to the terminal, which is kind of cool because you can click on this new terminal window and there you go. We are inside of a CLI or a command line interface. So we can do things. We can do stuff like ping commands. And the nice thing is, again, with Microtik, all of the options, you can configure everything. It's just sometimes with some of the newer, I'd say beta or untested features, you might have to configure all of those things via terminal window. I know stuff like the ISIS that came out like a year ago almost, uh, that you can configure via the command line, but you won't see it if you come into the routing. You, you don't see ISIS in here. That's just something to take note of, some nuance when it comes to marketing. Some features might be hidden inside the CLI if you want to go even further with configuring them. But the basic stuff is all here. But let's say we wanted to access the device over a terminal thing like uh, PuTTY or Secure CRT, you could totally do that as well. We can open up, I see I've already got a session running here. And then from PuTTY, I can either SSH or Telnet. By default, these protocols are open from the LAN for the Microtik. We'll look at how we can tweak it later on, but let's just grab the IP address of the Microtik so I can go back to Winbox even to find the IP address. How cool is that? So if I just disconnect if I look at this protocol, I see 172.16.0.1 is the IP. I'll just grab that IP address. It is worth noting that my computer has obtained an IP address inside this same subnet via DHCP. So let's grab that IP address. Now I can either SSH or Telnet. I will SSH in this instance. 
I can log in as, and then I'll just type in the login credentials quickly. And there we go. Now I'm inside the Microtik via a terminal window, and I can also just see, can I get any internet access? I've got internet from the Microtik via a command line session. And this goes hand in hand with the command line <laughs> because many people will see this kind of the same. But with more of the bigger Microtiks, not so much the haps, but a lot of the bigger Microtiks actually come with a console port where you can use a special rollover, a console cable that you can connect on your machine via either some USB adapter. And then when you connect to the console port, you can actually also still exactly the same, use your network um, terminal. Let's say you use your network terminal like PuTTY. Then you could also just specify it is a serial connection. You can find what console port it's using or COM port. And the speed, the baud rate is 9600. If I remember correctly, let's just look at Microtik's documentation. Uh, we should see there is a console here somewhere, serial console. And here it tells us exactly what serial console does, but um, this is kind of going really in depth. <laughs> All that I really want to know is what the baud rate is. Okay, so the baud rate is 19200. Data bits eight, parity none, stop bits one. So that is kind of all that you really need to know. Let's just see what the board rate is by default. It's 9600. So you might have to just update the board rate to actually get onto the Microtik to configure it, but it's still just a terminal session. So you'll put in the board rate details here and you open it, but I don't have a, a console connection to this and this is a hap that I'm running. But it, it'll do the same thing. You'll be on a terminal window and you'll be able to configure it through a console connection. The console is also nice because you're not actually connecting over IP at that case, you're connecting over a console connection. All right, so that is the third way. And now the fourth, and I'd say the final way that you typically connect onto your marketing is via a browser. So if I go onto Firefox, I can quickly just use the IP address as well to connect to it. So I'll type in HTTP colon forward slash forward slash 172.16.0.1. It is worth noting that the Microtik's default IP that it gets out of the box is 192.168.88.1, but I kind of just like using this IP address in, uh, let's say my home networks and such. I'm not sure why I Googled this now. Let's just quickly 0.1. There we go. So this will prompt us to the Microtik login details. This is also just kind of, it's got these little options at the bottom, which I actually like as well, because this will, if you go to Winbox, it actually directs you where you can download Winbox. You can get some nice graphs as well if you enable it. So you can see them similar to like SNMP graphs from the Microtik directly. You can look at the license or it will also just show you where you can go to, to get some more help, which is the documentation. But let's log on to Webfig quickly. And it is worth noting that the first time you log in, you might be prompted into this quick set menu. And quick set is an awesome place for the first time you configure a blank Microtik, but it's typically not where you want to work. And we will cover quick set in a separate video, just showing what it does and how it works. But typically where you want to be at is going to be the web fig menu. So similar to Winbox, it's also got all of these options in the menu where you can navigate to configure various things on your Microtik itself. Again, here's our interfaces so we can see what our interfaces is doing. We can look at stuff like our IP address configuration. The nice thing about WinFig that I will stress is with, with it, you can actually configure separate users with different Webfig type of profiles or access. So when they log onto the device using Webfig, you can restrict what they see. Cause let's say maybe you have some junior administrators and you don't want them to be able to muck about with some of the routing protocols because maybe it's not in their job description or maybe they might accidentally break something that they shouldn't. So you could actually restrict what they can see using Webfig using skins, and then they can only do what they need to do really on the Microtik. But again, if they are able to get onto stuff like the terminal, so if I go to the terminal window here, they can pretty much still do everything if you think about it. But these are the four different ways that I'd say that people typically use to access their marketings for the first time. I do hope this has helped you somewhat, especially that bit with, I'd recommend connecting on the second ethernet interface. We will look at the default configuration more in detail as well in an upcoming video. But this is just to get you started with how you can actually connect onto your Microtik, namely Winbox, the command line, 
via console connection or even via your web browser using WebFig. I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll catch you again in another video. See ya. Bye.